That round of applause was for me. And because it was for me, it was understandably quiet and subdued. Because the blood of John Wiley did not release anybody from their sins. And so this time, I want you to put your hands together for the one who was crucified for the sin of the world. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, come on. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Somebody put those hands together and give God a praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rock your stand. And I don't plan to be before you long. On this, on this afternoon, one of the good things about having multiple services to do is that if you don't jump as high as you can the first time, uh, you get another chance. So y'all pray for me this afternoon. But if you would just join hands with someone that's standing next to you as we go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, he's in the building. Hallelujah. He's in the building. He's in the building. Amen. Amen. This afternoon, very quickly, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pray a prayer of intercession intercession so uh, so 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 do me a favor do me a favor everybody do me a favor just get a good look at the person whose hand that you're holding look at him in the eye don't look at me look at them <laughs> smile some of y'all ain't smiled all week smile at them let them see the whites of your eyes. All right, everybody, look. Now, if you have not talked about that person this week, <laughs> this week, because, <laughs> you know, you know, the first lady, it's hard to pray for somebody you've been talking about, you know. They've been four letter words and now you're going to pray. The devil is a liar. But if you haven't talked about that person this week, that's who I want you to pray for. I don't want anybody to pray for themselves. But I want you to earnestly and I want you to sincerely pray for the hand that you're holding because you, you, you don't know. Y'all mind if I just be myself this afternoon? Yeah. You don't know what your brother or your sister has been through. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this house today. Uh, uh, you don't know the battles that they've had to fight. You don't know the tears that they've had to cry. Anybody ever been driving to church and you're steering the car with one hand and wiping tears with the other hand, but, but you said, if I can just make it to the house of God, if I can just get there, then I know everything will be all right. Uh, Mother Wallace, it was Jesus, and I call her mother, she's mama. Uh, Jesus looked at Peter, his disciple. He said, Simon, I've got something to say to you. He said, the devil has desired to have you and to sift you as wheat. But what did Jesus say? He said, but I have prayed for you. Uh, look at somebody tell them I'm praying for you. I'm praying. Uh, well, now that you said it, say it like you mean it. Tell them I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And notice Jesus' prayer. He didn't say to Peter, catch this. He didn't say to Peter that I've prayed for you that you fail not. Read the text. Read the text. Because Jesus understood better than anybody that the spirit indeed is willing. But sometimes the flesh gets weak. So he did not declare to Peter that I have prayed for you that you fail not. But instead he said I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Look at that person one more time and tell them your faith shall not fail. Now that you've had a, time, a moment to rehearse it, this time I want you to say it like you mean it. Tell them your faith shall not fail. Say it one more time. Your faith shall not fail. And he said,
said, when thou art converted, he said, strengthen thy brethren. That's what we're here to do this men's weekend. We're here to strengthen our brethren. Can we strengthen one another today? Father, in the name of Jesus, that name that sits high and above every name that has ever been named, the name that chases demons, the name that heals the sick, the name that raises the dead, the name that opens blinded eyes, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you once more and again for allowing us the privilege and the opportunity to sit together in heavenly places in the Christ Jesus. God, you've been good to us today. Oh, yes, you have. You've been better to us than we could have ever dreamed of being to ourselves. It was you that woke us up this morning. It was not the alarm clock. It was not the tap on the shoulder. It was you that woke us up this morning. It was you that started us on our way. And God, we understand that you did not have to do it, but we are especially glad that you did. In the name of Jesus, God, I'm praying for my brother right now. I'm praying for my sister right now. God, somebody came to church with their head hung down. Somebody came to church not knowing where the next meal is coming from. Somebody came to church with the weight of the world on their shoulders. I command the devil to back up off my brother. I command the enemy to back up off my sister. Touch my brother. Touch my sister from the crown of their head until the very soles of their feet. Give them a double. Give them a triple. Give them a quadruple anointing on this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, I'm praying for the angel of this house. God, I'm praying for the pastor of this church. God, I pray that you would continue to give them the wisdom, give them the strength, the vitality, and the energy to take this church to a level that it's never been before. God, I pray that you would bless his companion, the woman that stands by his side. Bless every preacher. Bless every teacher. Bless every auxiliary leader. Bless the, the ushers, the janitors, the cooks. Lord, let this church be a soul saving station where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest in the name of Jesus Christ God trouble the waters of baptism let your name be glorified in the midst of your people and we'll be careful to praise you in the mighty matchless and the wonderful name of Jesus and everybody said in Jesus name Come on, say it like you mean it in Jesus' name. Say it till you got the victory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, put those hands together one more time and give God a praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a good God. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house this afternoon. My, 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 my. There's a song that we used to sing that simply says, if it had not been for the Lord, which was on my side, I'd have to begin to wonder where would I be. Is, is, is there anybody in here that ever wonders where would you be if the Lord had not got all up in your business? Uh-huh, I got a witness right here. You know, he got all up in my business. Tell somebody he got in my business. That's, that's, that's why I'm standing where I'm standing. That's why I'm praising him. That's why I'm giving him glory. Because he got all in my business. And I'm grateful for God giving in my business today. I certainly love the Lord this afternoon. I love him because he first loved me. And he purchased my salvation way back on Calvary. I say this all the time. He's my boss. He is my CEO. He is my drill sergeant. He is my commander in chief. And he's everything unto me. And then of course, excuse me, we thank God for the angel of this house and the pastor of this church 
And I tell you, church, when God gifted you with this man, he gave you one of heaven's absolute best. Can we put our hands together for the God-fearing man of this house? We are the pastor of uh, Reverend Jerome Austin. God bless you, sir. I know him for the better portion of my life, and uh, uh, he's just been a tremendous blessing uh, to me. And then, of course, there's an old saying that says, behind every good man, is a good woman. And uh, I like that saying, I do, but I like to tweak it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Instead of saying behind every good man, I want to say beside every yeah. good man is a good woman. Because you remember when God put Adam in that deep sleep when he decided to make Eve Dr. Beard, he didn't, he didn't pull the bone out of Adam's back. <laughs> but he pulled the bone out of his side. So what does that mean? Her place is not behind him, but beside him. Ooh, well, my sister's at in this house. We thank God for First Lady Austin on today. God bless you on today. And then, of course, to uh, those that are responsible for this beautiful men's conference, thank God for them. Powell, is he gone? <laughs> Elder Thomas, oh, in the back. All right, God bless them. And pray for that soul uh, that was going down in Jesus' name. And, to, and I certainly thank God for, for this fireball right here. <laughs> Sister Sherry Wallace, I love her to death. She's been, she's been ever since I started as a young girl, man. I ain't that old. Uh, <laughs> uh, ever since as I was a young girl, man, with a with a lot more hair. <laughs> I've known her, she's been in my corner. So I thank God for her, thank God for her. And to all of these beautiful saints, we praise God for everyone on this men's weekend. Now, I hear the Lord has really been blessing this weekend and uh, I need y'all to pray for me coming behind all these great preachers and uh, just need your prayers on this afternoon. If you'll give me, what time is it? Uh, 1.15. All right, I'll have you out of here definitely by four o'clock. Um, <laughs> just make sure y'all listening. All right. Um, uh, there, there's a word I believe the Lord wants to speak to us, and uh, we'll just say what we have to say, and then we'll get ready for this afternoon. If you have a Bible, turn with me very quickly to the third chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Talking to men, women, boys, and girls today. This is for everybody. everybody. Acts chapter 3, and we're going to begin at verse number 1, and we will conclude with verse number 8. Good to see oh, Thomas, man. I ain't seen you in years, man. <laughs> I mean, a long time. Long time. That's my friend. God bless you, sir. And uh, Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through uh, verse number 8. If you're there, just say, I'm there. And it reads, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John go about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. That's what men ought to be saying. Look on us. If you want an example, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said unto them, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, 
but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with him into the temple walking and leaping and praising God somebody say amen, amen. you may be seated in the presence of the Lord <coughs> I want to zero in on the words that are recorded in verse number six, where it says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, do me a favor, just tap somebody next to you and tell them, rise up and walk. Rise up, brothers. Rise up and walk father help us this afternoon in jesus name amen um, i want to propose to this congregation and it's extremely uh, important that we understand this proposal it's important for those of us especially those of us who call ourselves saved and sanctified men of God, particularly the men, everybody, but particularly the men, it's important for us to take charge and to develop an attitude, a disposition that declares whatever is going on in life, regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstance, the problem or the dilemma that I'm experiencing in life, <clears throat> It's my duty as a man. It's my duty as a Christian. It's my duty as a father in this last and evil day to rise up and walk. To walk in the light as he is in the light. And I believe it was Paul, the apostle, who declared on one occasion that we should not walk after the flesh but instead he said walk after the spirit i'm certain that most of us here this afternoon could understand very plainly from a natural example that if you turn out the light if you try to move around if you try to walk around in a place where there is no light a place where the light fails to shine Eventually, you're going to come across something in that room that will cause you to stumble. And that stumble will eventually bring about a fall. This is why David declared, he said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and it is a light unto my path. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Now pray for me. I feel like preaching for just a few moments in this house today. Look for the Holy Ghost in this place. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, 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 Bishop, it does not take a theologian. I want to help somebody in this room. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't, you don't have to be a deeply rooted biblical expositor. And, and in many cases, you don't even have to be a Christian to, to be able to look out of the window of society and, and behold the corruption and the evil that's taken place uh, in this land of ours and come to the inevitable conclusion that we are in the last of the last and evil days. We're, uh, we're nearing the end. I wish I had a witness somewhere in this house. We're, we're nearing the end of this particular dispensation of the period of grace and truth and every day that passes and the more evil we got clowns killing people today you got the more evil that encompasses this land it brings us closer and closer to the coming of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ 
And brothers and sisters, the reason why I can so confidently stand here and declare to this audience without one shadow of doubt that we are in the last of evil days is because there are many prophecies that are being fulfilled right before our very eyes. And the fulfillment of these prophecies are indications that we are in the beginning of the end. Uh -huh. Many prophecies that were written by the prophets of old and even Jesus Christ himself that are unraveling right before our very eyes. And he said, when these things are happening, he said, this is what I want you to do. I don't want you to look to the east or the west. But he said, look up for your redemption of draweth nigh. And I can remember, I believe uh, it was in the 23rd or 24th chapter of the book of St. Matthew, what, what theologians call Jesus' Olivet Discourse. It was here in that chapter uh, that he gathered the boys together and they came to him concerning the last and evil days. They said, Lord, tell us, what shall these things be? When, uh, what shall be the sign of thy coming. I know you don't hear this kind of preaching on the word network but, but we need to get back to the basis. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And it's throughout this entire chapter that Jesus begins to highlight. He begins to detail certain prophecies that would be fulfilled in the last and evil days. He, he said, nation shall rise against nation. He, he said, kingdom shall rise against kingdom. There will be earthquakes and pestilences in diverse places. And anybody that's paying attention, anybody that's turned on the news, and, uh, you understand that these things have begun to happen right before our very eyes. So, I drove from Detroit to encourage somebody in Racine to, to put on the whole armor of God and get ready for the battle uh, that's about to take place in this land. Uh, but one particular prophecy, uh, I don't want to highlight any one over the other, but one particular prophecy that I believe the church as a whole should be on guard against uh, is the prophecy concerning the arisal of false prophets. Well, I feel like preaching. Y'all pray for me. Uh, the arisal of false prophets. It was John who declared. Uh, he said, many false prophets uh, have gone out into the land. Uh, and I want you to understand it is the false prophet's job. Uh, it is the false prophet's occupation uh, to deceive and to dissuade many would be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why Christianity, Lord help us this day, this is why Christianity has had such a credibility problem in these last and evil days. It's because of these false religious leaders who openly profess salvation, but they don't inwardly possess salvation. I'm going to say it again. The reason why we're in the mess that we're in is because of these folks who openly profess it but don't inwardly possess it. God Almighty, this is the reason why the salt has begun to lose its savor. This is the reason why we have not had the impact upon society that we have. Anybody in here, I feel like preaching, y'all pray for me. Anybody in here, if you've ever been witnessing to somebody, sometimes they'll stop you dead in your track. I don't want to hear it. Because uh, how in the world do you expect me to respect a religion when the pastor tells me not to steal? But they throw him in jail for stealing the tithe and the offering away from their followers. Good 
God Almighty, how in the world do you expect me to respect a religion when the pastor tells me not to commit adultery, not to commit a fornication, but they find him in a limousine turning tricks with a prostitute. This is the reason why the church has begun to lose its impact. This is the reason why we have not had the impact upon society that we should have. But I'm here to declare, I drove from Detroit all the way to Racing Disc, Wisconsin to declare to somebody that if the world is ever going to be convinced that you can live holy, if the world is ever going to be convinced that you can live sanctified in this unholy, unrighteous, devil-filled generation, then it's time for the men of God. It's time for the people of God, the apostolic, baptized, born-again believers, to get up off your bed of do-nothing, rise up and walk in the light so that men might be saved. Somebody talk, oh, shout. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can you shout hallelujah? God Almighty, y'all pray for me. I'm getting ahead of myself. But, uh, but Jesus uh, made it very plain what he declared. Uh, he pointed at you. He pointed at you. He pointed to the men. He pointed to the people of God. He looked you dead in your eye. And he said, ye are the lights of the world. Uh, he said, a city that is set up upon a hill uh, cannot be healed. And one thing you've got to understand on this afternoon is that only about 10% of your Christian life is going to be lived inside of this building. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. Only about 10%, if it's that much, a very small percentage of the life that you live as a Christian is going to be played out in the church edifice but the real test uh -huh, the real trial the true colors come shining through when you step out of this building and step into that wicked domain of the devil because don't you know that it's obvious to say everybody's light is going to shine while they're sitting in church Jesus, everybody, everybody's light is going to shine when you are surrounded by the saints. When, when the hands are clapping and when the feet are stumping, when, when the music is playing, when the pastor is watching, everybody's light is going to shine when they are surrounded by the saints. Oh, but the thing that separates the men from the boys and the the thing that separates the women from the girls is when you can develop an attitude that declares not only am I going to shine while I'm sitting in church, but I'm going to shine even brighter when I step out of this church and step into the devil's domain. Good God Almighty. Somebody shout hallelujah. Good God Almighty. It's important for us to understand uh, that if we are going to be uh, what God would declare uh, then we got to rise up uh, and walk in the light good God almighty God. I remember Jesus uh, looked at Thomas or rather Thomas looked at Jesus and said listen uh, uh, if I don't see it if I don't see it I won't believe it uh, but Jesus came back at him and and he said, blessed are they that have not seen, but yet they still believe. Many of us, ain't nobody here ever seen Jesus. You ain't seen him with your natural eye. But the only Jesus that the world is ever going to 
to see uh, is the Jesus that you and I live in front of him on a daily basis. Uh, and so it's important for us to gird up the loins of our minds uh, and get ourselves ready uh, for the battle uh, that's coming. Uh, uh, but I'm sad to say, uh, and it starts with the men, uh, uh, too many of us have neglected uh, our Christian responsibilities. Uh, uh, we've fallen asleep on our post uh, and we have brought reproach to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, but I stopped by uh, to tell somebody this afternoon uh, that if you don't do your job, uh, then baby, God will pass you back and he'll go and get somebody else. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, uh, if you neglect your Christian response Responsibility. Uh, uh, if you go to sleep on your post, uh, then baby God will pass you by. Uh, and he'll go out on the crackle on the street corner. Uh, pick him up a prostitute. Uh, he'll go down to the crack house. Uh, pick him up a crackhead. Uh, go down to the liquor store. Uh, grab himself a window. Uh, pick him up, turn him around. Uh, place his feet on solid crack. Put a Bible in his hand uh, and a song in his heart uh, and declare, follow me. Uh, I got a job that I want you to do. Uh, man of God, uh, it's time for you to get up from where you are. Uh, get up from your bed of do nothing. Uh, rise up and walk in the newness of life uh, so that men and women and boys and girls will be saved from their sins. Uh, somebody put those hands together and give God a prayer. <laughs> somebody shout hallelujah. Can you shout hallelujah? Can you shout hallelujah? Good God Almighty, y'all pray for me. I feel like preaching for just a few moments. I'm going to preach the devil off of somebody's back today. Because some of y'all been fighting with the same stuff for just a little bit too long. But do me a favor, tap your neighbor on the shoulder until it's time. Y'all ain't saying it. I said, tap your neighbor on the shoulder and tell them it's time. It's time for the people of God. It's time for the men of God. It's time for every one of us here today to understand what this thing is all about. Too many times we've allowed the enemy to cause us to go sleep on our uh, we've been playing around too long. Uh, the devil has enjoyed uh, the upper hand too long. Uh, especially the men. Uh, I'm talking to the brothers. He's made us look bad. Uh, we are the ones that are supposed uh, to be the first partakers. Uh, he's made us look bad. Uh, he's caused us to disappear from our families. Uh, he's caused us to disappear in our community. Uh, we got neighbors that we live by uh, that don't even know we're sanctified. Uh, we got folks that we go to work with every day uh, and they don't even know uh, that we've been born 